My name's Guy Kesteven and I've been a professional bike writer and tester for magazines and websites for nearly 25 years and I've been lucky enough to uh, be the writer of the guidebook for the fantastic new King Alfred's Way route uh, put together by Kieran Foster and the team at Cycling UK. It's a 350 kilometre route around the south of England uh, but starts in Winchester, works its all the way over Salisbury Plain, uh, the Ridgeway down through Reading, the Surrey Hills, and then back into Winchester. And it's a you know, an amazing historic route, covers over 10,000 years of history and prehistory. But it's also a really, really varied route between, you know, the tank roads of Salisbury Plain, the uh, covered Roman road bush tunnels uh, between Winchester and Salisbury, uh, the Ridgeway with its, you know, massive views, but kind of quite slippery, sort of chalky landscape and lots of ruts on there. And then the Surrey Hills with sand and flint, and then the South Downs Way with even more flint, even more hills, and some quite little challenging tasty bits of single track and steep climbs and stuff. So I thought I'd do a quick talk through on the bike I used uh, for my reconnaissance ride uh, before I finished writing up the guide and also kind of the kit and considerations. So you guys you know, have an idea what will suit you and what suits the route. Obviously what bike you use depends on what bike you've got and what your preferences are. But the route is pretty much perfect for a modern uh, gravel adventure bike like this uh, Santa Cruz Stigmata. Uh, as you can see, you've got a... Uh, Fast rolling but reasonably chunky tyres on here. These are 40 mil, but 50 mils have worked really well too. Uh, it's got a reasonably wide range gear set. I mean, I, there were some bits I was verging on pushing uh, with a load on. Uh, Butts a hill is a particular low point for your legs, especially if you had too much soup and sandwiches at Queen Elizabeth Country Park. But having a drop bar on the front means, you know, it's a little bit more aerodynamic when you plug into a headwind across Salisbury Plain or on the road sections that give you more ha hand positions. And also having a sort of narrower bar was quite useful on some of the tighter sort of heavily overgrown uh, shrubbery sections uh, over near Salisbury. It doesn't have suspension, which is where the fatter tyres come in handy. But with, I was running 30 PSI in these 40 mil tyres, they're set up tubeless. And, uh, you know, that was just about the right balance of sort of smoothness and easy speed on the road sections. But, I mean, there are sections where a mountain bike would be more applicable. Certainly a lightweight cross-country one would have been great for the South Downs Way sections. would have given me a slightly wider gear range. You could get by on a touring bike, but if you're using racks and panniers, uh, be careful of ground clearance on some of the rutted sections. And also, uh, all that rattling on the route is likely to loosen bolts all over the place, which is why I went with a bike packing rig on my bike. And also make sure you've got enough tyre volume in there. Uh, anything sort of down near 30 mil, you really are going to be nursing it through a lot of the rougher sections. And, you know, there's a lot of flint on this route. That's why this area was so popular with prehistoric people. Those flints that they napped into really, really sharp blades will cut through tyres even more easily than they'll cut through, you know, an animal hide. So make sure you take a puncture repair kit, make sure you take a pump, CO2 cartridge, whatever you use. I'd strongly recommend running your tyres tubeless if you can, and I'd probably take a tyre boot or two, uh, just so you can actually repair the carcass of the tyre if there's a big split. In terms of other essentials, as you can see, I took three bottles. On most of the days, there's... There's water taps available, there's plenty of stops close by, so I was fine just alternating between those two bottles. But I did have a third underneath the down tube, and that proved useful on the big stretch across Salisbury Plain, which was pretty hot. So, uh, although, you know, you don't want to be drinking out of that spout, it's handy to have that bottle to refill the other bottles. Uh, again, you know, inner tube, nice and handy there, multi-tool, nice and handy there. Although, if you are going to try and be clever with a bolt-on strap like that, Make sure your inner tube doesn't rub on the chain ring because uh, one of the guys I met up with for on the Salisbury Plain section, Russ, uh, got a puncture and I was just about to hand in my tube and found I'd already uh, chewed through the uh, inner tube on there. So if you're wondering uh, what the main thing I would do, I would do differently, it would be not put my inner tube there just because I thought it looked cool. Instead, you know, just put it into uh, your saddle bag or your top tube. To be honest, the top tube bag was great. Uh, that was where I put kind of most of my uh, things that I might need in a in a hurry, like me, uh, me spare GoPro was in there and me light, I think, was in there. And also little bit of lube is always handy. The day across the Ridgeway was quite sticky, so it was nice to be able to refresh, refresh the lube when we had a cafe stop. And also, you know, snacks, all kinds of instant access things can go in your top tube bag. And then the front end, I'm, I, this 
bar bag here I mostly just kept for food and if I whipped a waterproof off it could just go into the strapping at the front and uh, also my phone sat in there if it wasn't in my back pocket but to be honest I mean I did it in three days and I overnighted at people's houses or had a premier in stop halfway around and I was pretty much over bagged to be honest I could have done with probably just two out of three of these bags because uh, the back is just clothing on there and some of the heavy articles uh, what I would say, I mean, obviously this is a sort of classic bikepacking setup. Uh, these are Altura Vortex bags. Uh, turned out to be really, really good. Fully waterproof, which is definitely a bonus uh, given the English weather. But if there's anything you specifically need to keep dry, like your electronics, uh, take a separate dry bag as well, just so you can be sure nothing leaks in there. In terms of other spares, you know, just be sensible. I mean, the great thing about this route is, even though there are some amazingly remote feeling places, in actuality, you're never far from civilization and a bike shop or a garage or something that's probably help you out. But you don't want to be making unnecessary details. So, you know, take a multi-tool that you know fits all the things you need it to fit. Check a spare chain link. Uh, like I say, definitely take puncture equipment because uh, this is likely to be... I mean, I was lucky. Uh, I didn't have a single issue with a puncture uh, all through the ride, but you know i had my pump ready there uh like i say russ punctured when i was riding with him and uh, anna punctured when i was riding with her on the first day so don't expect to get around it completely inflated and uh, have the kit you need to repair it there's very very little busy road on the route but you know it just makes sense to take a backlight uh, to help with visibility whenever i hit the road you just reach around get it flashing give yourself a margin of safety i also took a front light uh, just in case i got behind schedule and it there's a lot of lights now where they work as a spare battery uh, for recharging lights recharging phones recharging your gps uh, which is quite a useful feature for sort of an adventure light and that's certainly the case with that nog light there and then I used a uh, Wahoo Roam as my GPS unit. There's a GPX link uh, free, downloadable on the website. And then there's a kind of special edition GPX route that you only get in the route guide, which has even more highlights. It has a, what I think is a better route around Stonehenge and a really nice diversion around near Winchester. And it also puts you onto the Basingstoke Canal, which is the route I rode for the reconnaissance. And I definitely recommend that. Another point, if you're using bike packing bags, uh, there is a lot of rattling and a lot of bouncing around on this trail. You know, some of the off-road sections are really quite fun. Uh, so make sure, you know, you pad your frame up, tape it up, uh, tape any components up just to avoid any scratching and uh, damage to your frame. Because uh, these bags will move around, uh, especially as you're charging down off uh, Old Winchester Castle. I think that was probably the descending highlight, but you know, there's loads of really, really good fun single track and double track trail on this route. So, you know, make sure you enjoy it, but make sure your bike doesn't suffer too much as a result. And again, obviously what you wear is entirely up to you and whether or not you wear a helmet is entirely up to you. But I would say uh, there are some low hanging branches in sections. So, you know, even though it's a very, very low traffic route, uh, having a bit of protection on your head isn't a bad thing. And uh, also, you know, it's especially for riding in summer, a bit of eyewear protection definitely came in handy, whether it was rain or insects or the occasional bramble whipping across the trail. Uh, I, I can say I went light, I did it in three days, so most of the time I was wearing this uh, Gore Phantom Pro. Uh, it's a lightweight, sort of almost waterproof, but very windproof and just warm enough jacket. It's got zip off of all sleeves. Uh, there's a full video review of it up here, so uh, go and have a look at that if you want. And then I wore a seven, me seven mesh merino shirt uh, underneath it because merino is really good in that it stays warm if it's damp and it doesn't smell too bad several days into a ride. Shorts, uh, go with what you're comfortable with. I made a big mistake. I took a new pair just to try them out. They look promising. Uh, first day was not fun. Uh, so uh, yeah, I went back. To, luckily, I had a couple of tried and tested pair of gore shorts with me. And again, fresh shorts, if you can take fresh shorts for every day, it makes a massive difference to your comfort and fresh socks as well. And in terms of shoes, I just wore a uh, lightweight mountain bike shoe uh, that was just, you know, easy to walk in and dried quickly. In terms of other kit, uh, spares, again, I was traveling light, so, but these prove really useful on the ridge wave, on a wet morning there. A pair of really light waterproof shorts, uh, just to keep the grit out of your particulars, uh, stop it turning into grinding paste up there, and a decent waterproof jacket, or at least a decent weatherproof jacket. And I would suggest going for something uh, light but relatively durable, 
and obviously if it's a more civilian style jacket uh, you can you know wear it sort of just you know while, you, while you're waiting for your takeaway curry or you know just taking in the views it's just nice to have a bit of protection and, uh, and a hood just to rather than going for like a micro light race cape but again you know if you're wanting to do it as fast as possible then you know dress accordingly again uh, spare shorts massive bonus in terms of comfort and freshness spare socks also and then uh, I also took a uh, long sleeve base layer it takes up minimal weight uh, but can make a real difference to comfort and warmth whether you're wearing it under your waterproof or your windstopper or just you know starting early in the morning or late in the evening and you're just wearing it under your jersey in terms of food again i kind of overestimated most days because i ate going hungry it's one of the worst things can happen on a kind of extended tour so i pack plenty of snack bars and sort of energy food but also kieran very kindly sent me a, a bunch of pork pies before i set off so uh, yeah, I had a pork pie every day. And it was just really, really nice to have uh, sort of a savoury treat to look forward to. And I could share and shared one with Anna, uh, shared one with Russ as well. So that became quite a nice little, you know, it came like a little bit of a ritual on the day. You know, I'd whoever was joining me on the route, I'd share a pork pie with them. And it was quite a nice touch. And obviously, but there's plenty of places, especially now, you know, COVID's lifted. Uh, I rode the reconnaissance ride just as COVID had lifted. So not everywhere was open, but there are plenty of places to get food and get drink, you know, you know, ranging from farm shops to calves, you know, you know you're passing very close to Salisbury. You're actually going through Reading. So there's plenty of opportunity to uh, stock up on supplies or just nip into a local pub for a bit of lunch or a packet of crisps. And another place where uh, pubs and cafes can come in handy is if you're thinking of taking an e-bike. You know, it's a very suitable route for e-bikes. Uh, there's no head places where you'll need to lift them over a fence or a gate or anything like that. And, you know, you can cut the route down into uh, battery friendly segments, depending on how much assistance you need. But if you ask nicely, or even, even better, if you ring ahead and ask nicely, a lot of pubs and cafes will let you partially recharge, you know, top up your batteries. So you've just got a bit of peace, peace of mind uh, when you're pushing on and you don't want to run out of power. And then the absolute essential piece of equipment that you need is uh, the actual King Alfred's Way route guide. You know, I used to be an archaeologist, so this was an absolute gift of a route to write up in terms of all the points of interest and all the stories uh, that 10,000 years of English history uh, puts alongside the trail. That's the cover. I haven't got a copy of the actual book yet, but it'll be uh, that size. It'll be this A5 size, but not quite as thick because that's the uh, 800 mile long uh, Great North Trail ride. And it'll have uh, OS maps in there and, you know, any points where the navigation is particularly difficult or whether there's something to watch out for. All of that information is included in this book. So thanks for watching me rattle on. Uh, hope some of the information and hints and tips I've given have been useful. I can't recommend this route enough. It's been fantastic to write it up. It was fantastic to ride it. And I hope you really, really enjoy riding it yourself. Thanks for watching. I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kest TV talking about the brand new King Alfred's Way route from Cycling UK.